Hello, and welcome to Flashback Data Archives. My name is Steve Hamilton, and I'll be your instructor for this course. OK, let's get started. In this lesson, we will define the Flashback Data Archives architecture. We will learn how to manage our Flashback Data Archives and perform Flashback Data Archives administration. And at the end, there will be a Flashback quiz. So what is Flashback Data Archives? Flashback Data Archives is also referred to as Total Recall. This enables us to place a table in archiving mode, which we can track all changes, whether they're DDL or DML, against that table based off a series of years. If for some reason you have to meet regulatory requirements, HIPAA, Sarbanes-Oxley, FDA, IRS, whatever they may be, Many times, organizations will be audited by the federal government, and they want to see all changes that have made against that table over a period of time. This is specifically true in things like the FDA. So they wanted to see that a value was changed from X to Y six months ago. With traditional flashback query, we could not do that. Now, with flashback data archives, we can create an archive, place it in the table space, assign that table to the archive, and then all changes against that table will be tracked. The flashback data archive really needs two main components. First of all, you need a table space. This will be similar to the undo table space. However, the archive is going to be enabled at the table level. Keep in mind, once a table is placed in archiving mode, that that table cannot be dropped. All changes made to that table will be tracked and retained for a series of years. If for some reason you choose to short up the archive, let's say the archive was five years and now you changed it to three years, two years of data would be lost. And again, Oracle 12C will track all DDL changes as well as DML changes. The reason that we have flashback data archives is predominantly for data tracking reasons. When you create a flashback data archive, there's really three components associated to a flashback data archive. First of all, the table space that it will reside in. Second of all, the retention period and the quota that's associated to that archive. Either one of these can be changed. Typically, you may want to change the quota, but I would not recommend changing the retention. Flashback data archives will only work for locally managed table space and under retention or undo management must be enabled. So the three parameters that have to be set is undo management must be set to auto, undo table space must be established, and under retention must also be set. Flashback data archives does not require database bounce, can be performed on the fly. If you look at the data dictionary views, you will see a series of tables like sys or sys underscore hist or fdb. These are referred to as history tracking tables. Keep in mind, all changes that are made against a table will be tracked. So therefore, massive inserts, updates, and deletes could seriously affect performance, or any sort of DDL changes could also seriously affect performance. So we're going to be able to track the changes to a table over its lifetime. So several steps have to occur. First of all, we would create a table space that would contain the archive. Once we create the table space that contains the archive, we would actually create the archive itself. So what we see here is the actual SQL commands that says create flashback archive default. That keyword default is very important. That means that is going to be the default archive for the entire database. So once you place a table in archiving mode, if you give it the keyword default, this would be the archive that it uses. So here I'm going to create a flashback archive. This archive will be the default archive for the entire database. The name of the archive is archive one year, and it is going to reside in the table space retention archives. This particular archive will have a quota of five gig in this given table space with a retention of one year. So if you look at that again, I'm going to create the flashback archive. It is the default archive for the database. The name of the archive is archive one year. It will reside in the table space retention underscore archives with a quota of five gigabytes and a one year retention. The retention period can be set anywhere in megabytes, terabytes, or gigabytes. And the default archive table space, 
you have one default archive table space at a time. So I can only have one default archive, but I can totally override that. If I create one default archive and I want to place this, place this table in the archive of five years, I would just specify that at the alter table level or the create table level. So here, what we've done is I'm creating this table tester. The table itself is going to reside in the table space users, but the flashback archive is going to use the default archive or whatever I specified. So in this particular case, I'm going to create the table testers. The table itself is going to reside in the table space users. When I gave it the keyword flashback archive, I didn't qualify the actual archive name. So using my prior slide, it would use the archive one year. You can have multiple archives with different retention times um, and quotas. Keep in mind that once a table is placed in archive mode, it is a history tracking table and it cannot be dropped. All DDL changes will be written to a series of what's called FBT tables. And this is flashback tracking tables. And you will see this if you query something like user underscore tables and you've made significant changes to a history track table. Also keep in mind a schema that contains a history track table cannot be removed with the cascade option. In no way, shape or form can that table be dropped if it's a history tracked table. You can't drop the table, you can't drop the schema that contains the table, and you can't drop the table space that contains the table as well. To determine specifically what tables are in archive mode, you could query the data dictionary view DBA flashback archive tables. That's going to identify the tables that are archived. And if you want to look at the table spaces that are archived, you can query DBA flashback archive TS. So to look at the actual tables in archive mode, DBA flashback archive tables, and to look at the actual table spaces that contain a flashback archive, look at DBA flashback archive TS. To assign a table to data archive, you can do this when the table is created or after the table is created. You could simply issue this alter table, table name, flashback archive, and then assign the specific archive to it. If you don't assign the specific archive, it will use the default archive for the database. So again, archiving can be assigned when you create the table or after you create the table. By default, archiving is disabled. Keep in mind, enabling archive at the table level, if there's a series of changes made to that table, could cause some significant performance problems. Keep in mind, on a history track table, the retention period can be changed. If the retention period is decreased, the data may be lost. So again, if I went from a five-year retention to a three-year retention, I could lose two years of retention. Increasing the retention is not a problem. Decreasing retention could result in data loss. So again, to place a table in archive mode, it's simply alter table, and you give it the keyword flashback archive, and then the actual name of the archive. You can move a table from one archive to another. However, if you move it from one archive to another, data could be lost as well. So if you move it from a five year to a three year, the same rules apply. But a table can be moved within the archiving structure. To retrieve data from a history track table, it's gonna be very similar to a flashback query, except for you notice here, when we give it the as of timestamp command, the interval is not a day or a minute, it's a year. So we would write the query the same way with flashback data archives, except for our interval would be something like days, months, or years. This operates very similar to flashback query. The only major difference is flashback query retains data in hours, minutes, seconds. Flashback data archives is days, months, years. In order to enable flashback archive, you must have flashback archiving privilege assigned to you. So you have to be granted the flashback data archives system privileges to create or modify the flashback data archive. Then you can assign a table to a specific archive. Please go ahead and download the quiz on the courses page under the courses materials tab. Take the quiz or take the interactive online quiz. Thank you.